Well, hi, hi, hi there, all our real sharks, and welcome to a special bonus material episode of the Real Sharks podcast with your host, of course, Rob, and his other faithful co-host, Donna, out there in KC. Hello. And as you all know, we have just acquired Donna on our panel, and so we're going to get some women perspective on some subjects here that we might have been lacking in the, you know, dare I say, vagina department. <laughs> so... <laughs> We'll just we'll just say it right then and there. So you know this is this is to you, all my ladies. So uh, you know, be thankful Donna's here. <laughs> right. Speaking of being thankful, so on my screen, your uh, Academy Award winner guy over there, his that guy, is full on bust right in my face. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, the area is changing colors. Right now, it's purple. Yeah, it actually <laughs> says. It actually says the to the best dad. Well, now I I feel bad for making that comment. <laughs> That's why I showed it to you. I was like, yeah, my son gave me that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't buy That's it for myself. So, <laughs> first we'll start off with this here. Um, let me ask you. Gotta uh, love the weather around here. Right. So let's go ahead and talk about this subject I've been wanting to talk about with a female for a while. You know. One of the things I will say, and I defend this um, with our show very proudly, even though we have not had a female on air with us, I have defended feminism in films quite a bit to the point of where I can actually stamp that on my uniform as an achievement here in podcasting. Because I have once made the joke, and I know I'm pretty popular for making it here, is that I once said, you know, what do you want out of women's in film? They can't be whores. They can't be queens. They can't be Jedis. They can't be Terminators. They can't be a lot of different things. So what do you want them ultimately to be? You know, there's. I think there's a overrepresentation and underrepresentation when it comes to f- females in films. I also think there's a recycled aspect of uh, characters that I think gets overplayed, and that doesn't leave enough to uh, give female characters and actresses a, um, you know, a, a chance to grow. Um, but I also, I also, there's also a flip side to it too, where some, some women have gone into roles like Sigoni Weaver, as I've stated plenty of times as a prime example in the alien franchise that just killed it. There's no one that could ever do that role. There's nobody else that could ever take her place. Sigoni Weaver is the alien franchise and she's actually a hero character of mine. So it's kind of, you know, off putting to me when I hear someone saying, oh, I can't get behind a female lead. It's like. For me, that's weird because, like, you know, Sigourney Weaver is one of my favorite ca- – Ripley is one of my favorite characters of all time. What do you mean you can't get behind a female lead character? It's like they're just as strong as men character if they're done particularly correct. And sometimes if not stronger. Yeah, if not stronger. But, you know, what do you think about like, – you know, let's, let's, let's kind of break it down here. You know, I take a movie like Princess, for example. It just recently came out on Hulu, and what it was was almost a – you had a you had a beautiful blonde haired woman, you know, basically maybe a hundred pounds wet, and she's basically doing all these kung fu move uh, kung fu moves, you know, beating up knights in full fledged armor because she's a warrior princess. Even though you know, I would say not exactly your representation of a warrior, <laughs> definitely a princess. Um, the film itself, I didn't mind. I don't mind when a film wants to have fun with a with a, with an aspect of like that, where you have a female that goes around kicking everyone's ass. But the problem I have with the film is it took itself almost too seriously, and I thought that's I think that sometimes is a problem, not for necessarily the story, but for the lead itself. I guess I think it does damage to the movie itself, not to that, but also kind of takes down the female role. What do you think about that kind of aspect? I'd have to agree on it, you know. Um, they were putting too much pressure and thought into her being this m- wonderful princess warrior, like you were saying. It just kind of defeated the purpose. Like you're like, nah, that's pushing the envelope a little bit too much. Let's let's step it back a little bit and not overdo it. But it's Hollywood; they like to overdo everything. Okay. What do you feel about women that, like, take on a role, like, for example, 
Like, let's say, let, you know, here's a good one. What about the female Terminator? I remember when the female Terminator came out, everyone was so kind of like, oh, my God. Can you believe that? The best Terminator is not Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a woman. It, and it was. Mm-hmm. I, and I, okay, I still love him. I love Arnold as the Terminator. Hey, well, who doesn't? Exactly, right? But it gave women be like, hey, you you know, they can be anything they want to be. They can be a Terminator, mm-hmm. you know, type of thing. And it's not just for older women, you know, my age, they're teenagers or whatever. But for little kids also, you know, it gives them someone to look up to be, you know, like, hey, I can be whatever I want to be. If she can be a Terminator, I can too. What about the whole, not just that principle, but the the principle, you know, hell, n- no, no scorn like a like a woman, you know, basically. Hell, no, be- ha- hell, have no fury like a woman scorned. There you go, because I think it actually sometimes is funny that uh, they made a woman to be a Terminator, because I'm like, to me, that makes sense. I mean, that's that's scary as shit. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I mean, you're having a woman come after you to terminate your ass. I mean. <laughs> They they, they 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 already know how to think like a man. You're not running from a dude that's like trying to figure you out. You know, this one already knows what you would do. <laughs> exactly. And we know how to find you. Right. Like we don't need Google. Right. <laughs> so I, I you know, I think sometimes that recycled aspect gets um overplayed and underplayed. I think in, in very negative ways. I really don't like when a lot of people think that women take away from a film. I mean, sometimes I under, I understand that aspect in a sense of like, for example, the Hobbit movies. There was no love interest between uh, I don't even remember the two characters, but Dory and the elf. There was no love interest in the Hobbit, but they added that because they thought it would put more females in the theaters to see the Hobbit. What do you think about Hollywood doing things like that, like trying to? placate to that aspect of like hey we'll we'll insert this into a story that has nothing to do with it just try to get your ass in the seat that's not gonna work for me it's it's gonna have to be the story i could give care less if there's a love story involved or not but i'm not your typical woman you know you'd say i don't do the chick flicks and stuff like that yeah i've watched a couple but not very many No twilight for you no I've seen them, and that's because, you know, I one of my foster sisters had them, and we'd sit down and watch them, you know, but vampires do not sparkle. <laughs> right. That's my biggest thing. But, you know, they need – it's kind of like – um, hold on. Transformers. Them putting the sexy female in as the role to get more men in the mm. seats. Um, they already got more men in the seats because they made a Transformers movie. Mm-hmm. They could have, you know, casted anyone to be her, but they chose her. And I can't remember her name right now because I'm drawing. Megan com- Bucks. Thank you. A complete blank. But, you know, I just. If they have a good story and they think they can stick with it, that's what ticket costs are going to sell. Not making a fake storyline to get more females to watch the movie. It's kind of like a friend of mine, um, he told his now wife that he wanted to watch Troy, and it was a love story, and she fell for it. Troy is kind of a love story. (laughs) Slightly. Slightly. Not enough to, I wouldn't say it is a love story, but it's slightly there. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's a love story in the sense of, like, I would say maybe Cloverfield is a love story. (laughs) (laughs) That's one. That's that's a teeny teeny aspect, but you know it doesn't. It's not the whole story. <laughs> exactly. It's just a little bitty spot. You know, mm. there's a little love story in it, but not much. So, love stories are not do not placate to the female aspect in you is what you're telling the audience, right? Yes, it doesn't. So, and you know, I'm sure there's a lot of females that are going to go out there and say, "Well, you know, you're crazy." You're crazy because who wouldn't want to watch a movie about a guy in the sense of a Robert Pattinson, Twilight, you know, vampire that basically you can't have sex with him. So you have to fall in love with him mentally. (laughs) He has to love you mentally for a woman, the woman you are. And that is actually the real true aspect of Twilight is the first first couple of stories before he actually it's him having you had to fall in love with him emotionally. Some women would say you're crazy for not find that appealing what would you say to that they're probably right but it's just the whole story together now if that wants to be their focus right there is you know a woman 
and a man should fall in love emotionally first before everything else, then I mm-hmm. would agree with it. But let's go add a little spice to it and put vampires and werewolves mm-hmm. and everything else into it to get, you know, the younger, older audience involved in watching it. But I have no desire, like, I don't know, just that movie did not appeal to me. Now, something like Fifty First Dates, that's a love story where he makes her fall in love with him every and that's single romantic. time. That is romantic. Mm, see, that's that's why we have you on this show. 